My name is Mike Hopkins. I live in Boston, I'm 22 years old, studying at university to be a doctor. My dream is to be a great surgeon like my father. When I was a kid, I used to see my dad on the news. His name is Harry Hopkins. He saved a lot of lives. He always performed the most complex operations without hesitation and did the impossible. He was my hero. Mom used to say that if it wasn't for my dad, she wouldn't be here with us right now. She was a patient with a serious pathology and dad took a risk, although initially there was little chance of saving her. Only the professionalism of the surgeon and the enormous dedication of the doctor helped to put mom on her feet. And then they fell in love with each other and got married. Once I even had the chance to see him at work in the hospital and I remembered that day forever. He performed surgery on a little girl who was immobilized by paralysis. It all went well and after rehabilitation, the girl was able to get back on her feet. At that time, seeing the happy face of his patient, I decided to become as brave a doctor as my dad. But that path wasn't easy. Back in school, I often went to the clinic and watched the work of professionals, gaining experience, so to speak. I tried to help the medical staff in any way, do a full cleaning in the operating room, prepare instruments, taking the laundry and taking out the garbage. Everyone knew I was Harry's son, so they would let me be there. My first participation in the surgery was funny. When I saw blood, I fainted and fell right on the patient. Some of the assistants took the time to bring me back to my senses. Dad laughed for a long time, and I was slighted. How could a surgeon's son be afraid of the sight of blood? When I came back to help Dad next time, he felt respect for me. After hard study and work in the clinic, I entered the university with success. Studying at university wasn't easy. Medicine is a delicate matter and it requires not only knowledge, but also extensive practice. Being in my final year, I managed to become an intern at the clinic where my father worked. I was no longer the kind of boy who fell from the sight of blood, so I could already participate in many operations and procedures. Gradually gaining more experience and knowledge, I became more confident and better able to perform my own surgeries. It seemed like I was finally getting closer to my father. But one day, something happened that shook my faith in myself. Our house, which I hadn't lived in for a long time, was going to be renovated, and my parents asked me to help clear some rooms. I was happy to help them because it had been a long time since I had seen my mother. After hours of rearranging and cleaning, I went into the attic. My parents asked me not to go in there as they wanted to deal with the necessary things and documents themselves. I thought they had a habit of keeping me out of the attic as I was always afraid of the attic as a child. At the time, I thought someone was living or hiding in there. Maybe it was some kind of monster that was just waiting for me because as soon as I was going to go there, my parents would secretly block my way, distract me into something else, and eventually they just wouldn't let me in. But that was when I was a kid. So I decided not to tell them and just go in there and clean up. The attic was a bright room and pretty dusty, with lots of different, old, and very interesting stuff. There was a whole history of our family in there. Why wasn't I allowed in? Because I could make up different games here, use things to break them down. What a shame I hadn't used such a beautiful attic when I was a kid. That's when I heard my parents' voices. I was just behind the panels and I couldn't be seen. They hurriedly came in and talked about me, afraid I wouldn't find anything. Dad was standing outside in case I showed up, and Mom was fussy and nervous, looking for a box. As she went along, she described it, a brown cardboard painted with patterns, and Dad kept rushing her and getting nervous and the box was right next to the panels, covered with a piece of cloth. After a while, she was despairing about finding it, and Dad said it was better to lock the attic. That's what they did, and they left. So I stayed locked in the attic. For the first time, I felt the tide of real fear. I took this strange cardboard box and decided to look there. Inside, there were strange documents in my photo as a baby. Looking through the paperwork, I found a reference that completely baffled me. It was a certificate of my adoption. I couldn't believe what I had read. Turns out I was abandoned at birth and left at the clinic. The same multidisciplinary clinic where my dad and I work. At the time, young surgeon Harry couldn't leave me and they adopted me along with my mom. I felt strange feelings. Shock, sadness, resentment, bitterness. But why wasn't I told about it before? Why did they keep it from me? That's why mom and dad didn't want me to clean up in the attic. I felt detached from them. I felt that my dream was an emotion imposed by my father. In a fit of rage, I started knocking on the door. After a while, I heard Harry and Mom's voice. They hurriedly opened the door with a key and stared at me in wonder. When they saw the box open, they understood everything. 
Dad wanted to explain something, but I pushed him aside and ran away from home. Mom shouted my name after me, but I told her I wouldn't listen to my stepmother. I didn't want to say it, but the words came out of my mouth. I went to my apartment. Being alone, I couldn't understand why my heart had become so empty, because even if I was adopted, I was still my parents' son. But nothing could stop the flow of emotions. In the heat of passion, I gathered everything I needed and headed for the airport. I wanted to run away to any country to get forgotten. I bought a ticket for a flight and it turned out that there was plenty of time. I immediately fell on a loose sofa and just laid there with the music on. I wasn't mad at my parents. What was their fault? Just because they adopted me? I just couldn't bear the thought that I was thrown away by someone like an unwanted kitten. An unwanted thing like an ice cream wrapper. It hurt my ego badly and my soul was crying unbearably. By this time I was totally depressed. I had no clear thoughts in my head. I was struggling with the pain that was felt in the heart area. I was in such a confused state and had a sudden dream, just as confused and severe. Suddenly, at 2 a.m. I got a call from my dad. I didn't want to answer it, but I couldn't ignore the situation anymore. I rudely said, What do you want from me, Harry? He said, Son, your mom's having a heart attack because of stress, and you're the only available surgeon's assistant right now. I could only say, I'm on my way. By my fault, my mother was on the verge of death. I felt terrible. I went to the clinic right away. I broke into the operating room and put on my uniform. My dad was already ready. The next three hours felt like forever. The most complicated surgery I'd ever been involved in, both emotionally and physically. My father was twice as serious. He never looked at me once. In the end, the operation was successful and my mom was stabilized. Her heartbeat improved and all the symptoms and spasms were gone. Everyone went outside and there was only our family in the room. As soon as mom opened her eyes, she cried out. She was incredibly happy to see me and my dad together. She could barely say, you saved me. After my mother's words, my father put his hand on my shoulder and said, you're adopted, but that doesn't mean we're not related. You're the real baby we've always dreamed of. You'll be the best surgeon. I couldn't hold back my tears and I fell to my mother's knees. After what happened, I swore never to leave my beloved parents. My parents laughed that I was too emotional as usual. And for a surgeon, besides a hot heart, you need neat hands and a cool head. Are there any of you who have been adopted? Always remember that parents are not the ones who gave birth, but the ones who raised you with love and care. If you're touched by the video, like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Hi, I'm Justin. I attend an ordinary public school where we have a standard life. Kids skip lessons, bring to classes exotic animals like chameleons and other weird stuff like grenades which have not detonated, etc. From time to time we have local scandals. But in general, it's the high school students who control other school children's relations and interests. They decide who is bullied and who is the leader. Things had been like this until the day a new gym teacher was born. Mr. Richard Cock. We disliked him from the very first moment. He believed he was the chief and established his own rules in the school. He didn't allow students to play around and made the boys obey and work really hard in the gym. Mr. Koch had a crazy idea to win the US President's Challenge Competition, which was an annual event. By the way, our school had never been even close to winning the first prize. Of course, we didn't like training and sweating all the time. What we were really interested in were the girls. However, the changes made by Mr. Koch helped other teachers to take a better control of us. As for Miss Ann Wilson, the 7th grade coordinator, she seemed to be very fond of Mr. Koch. They were often seen in the school cafeteria drinking coffee and talking. Briefly speaking, school became dull and boring, and many of us started studying harder or practicing sports. And then, a huge scandal was sparked. Even the founder of the school, Mr. Rochel, and a number of policemen arrived to resolve the situation. So, what happened? Mr. Koch, the gentleman who we were both afraid of and set as an example turned out to be a child molester. He had allegedly installed a few cameras in the girls' locker room and enjoyed watching his secret videos. Cameras, locker room, police, even reporters. In other words, the situation got out of control. The entire school was in chaos. Of course, Mr. Koch was arrested and poor Miss Ann Wilson was beside herself with grief and disappeared for a couple of days. However, Soon she returned to school with Mr. Rochel and representatives of the police department. 
People talked that negotiations were underway about commutation of the sentence because Mr. Koch had provided full confession. At a certain moment, we even felt sorry for our gym teacher. Maybe even the most honest men have their issues. The school gradually returned to the normal life, and we nearly forgot about this scandal when a new one broke. As it turned out, Miss Anne was able to obtain a permission for installing a hidden camera in the boys' toilet, and the teachers found out that boys shared those videos from the girls' locker room with each other. Of course, kids knew that because we paid Ben and Chris, who were high school students, to watch the videos. Those students told us that they had stolen the flash drive from the camera in the girls' locker room when the gym teacher was arrested. But the police said that the flash drive hadn't been stolen, which meant that Ben and Chris lied about the way they had received the flash drive. The police soon got confessions from the two boys, who confirmed that they had installed the cameras in the girls' locker and shower rooms to set up the gym teacher and shoot girls changing their clothes and having a shower. Yeah, that's our school. Every day surprises us. Mr. Richard Koch was released from the prison. The police apologized to him. Miss Ann Wilson helped to clear his name. Ben and Chris were not arrested, but their parents transferred them to another school. New technologies develop so fast that you never know if you are being watched, even in the toilet. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button and leave your comments. See you soon on Do Such Things Really Happen channel.